For the past few game jams, my goal has been to learn a new framework or library. This started off with libgdx, a Java framework I used in the libgdx game jam, then raylib with C++ in ludumdare46. And last weekend, I participated in the 2020 GMTK Game Jam, hosted by the Game Makers Toolkit YouTube channel, with the goal of creating a game with SDL2. I like libgdx and raylib, but SDL is appealing to me because it's high level enough that I can easily create a window, get input, and play sound, but I have to create my own systems for handling things like sprite rendering, animations, and physics, which seems like a fun way to go about game development. I've still been looking for a go-to framework for creating my simple 2D games, and I think SDL is perfect for me. That doesn't necessarily mean I'll be able to learn how to use it in 48 hours, but I guess it's worth a try. <laughs> Before the jam started, I wanted to set some things up. First of all, obviously I needed SDL. I followed a tutorial by CoderGopher that goes over setting up SDL2 on Windows with Sublime Text. I wasn't too sure about Sublime Text at first, but holy f I think I'm in love with it now. It's super customizable with JSON files, which is perfect for me since I use a variety of compilers. And that leads me to the next thing I needed to set up, a way to compile my SDL code to the web since no one's going to play my sh game if they have to download it. I set up Inscripten, which is a compiler that can convert C and C++ code to JavaScript, and to test it out I made a, um, well it's like a smiley face, and you see it like bounces off of the walls. So all I needed now to get started was the theme. GMTK jams always have really good themes, and this year was no exception. The theme was revealed to be out of control, and I wasn't the only one who thought it was really clever. I started brainstorming ideas, and eventually I remembered a Club Penguin minigame called Puffle Roundup where you can't control the puffles, but they move away from your cursor so you can kinda guide them around. This fit the theme really well, so I thought it would be fun to try to make a game with a similar mechanic. So I created this basic prototype with a square. But not just any ordinary square. This square is allergic to your mouse cursor. It moves away from your cursor and jumps in the air when you press the left mouse button. The closer you are to the square, the higher it jumps. And if you touch the square, it dies, so I guess it makes sense that it's scared of you. So yeah, it's not a direct copy of Puffle Roundup, but you can kind of see the inspiration. Implementing this in SDL wasn't very difficult. I wasn't planning on watching CoderGopher's entire SDL tutorial series, but it kind of just happened. So we're going to end that line with a semicolon. The reason we end these things with semicolons is because this is a real programming language, not Python. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, good. <sighs> I'm glad I did watch all of it though, since it taught me some good ways of structuring my project. I have an entity class that contains a texture and an x and y position. Then in my render window class, I have a function for just rendering a texture at any position, but I also have a function for rendering an entity at its current position. And then all of the objects in my game, like the player and enemies, can just extend this entity class. It's a pretty basic concept, so I'm surprised I hadn't thought of doing it in my past projects. I guess it's because I'm not normally writing my own rendering methods. So I have a player class that extends the entity class, and every frame I call an update method on it that moves it around based on its velocity, which is based on the cursor's position and gravity. I also have a jump function that I call in my main game loop when the left mouse button is pressed. All this does is set the player's y velocity to a constant multiplied by the distance between the cursor and the player, which I also created a function for. Now that I had some basic gameplay, I started creating some art for the player character. Then I had to create a system for animations. Instead of drawing animations frame by frame by hand, I separated my player into 5 layers and move each layer individually using code to create simple animations. To do this, I modified my entity class to be able to take a list of textures instead of just a single texture. Then in the render function for an entity, if there's more than one texture, I draw each of them to the screen, starting from the end of the list. I render each texture at the entity's position, plus an x and y offset that I store in a list that corresponds to the list of textures. So now I can just modify these offsets to create simple animations. 
I made the eyes look at the cursor by setting them to the cursor's position and clamping their values within the player's head. And the legs are animated using two opposite sine waves which have amplitudes based on the player's current x velocity. So I had this cool little guy that moved away from your cursor, but all I could think of now was, what next? I realized that I got kind of carried away making these animations and didn't really have any ideas for actual gameplay. There were a lot of directions I could take this mechanic. I figured some kind of idea would come to me eventually, so I started working on some ground tile sprites. I took inspiration from the Cap Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey. Originally I was planning on making the cursor a ghost, so I thought a gloomy environment would be fitting. I drew a list of ground tiles to the screen and decided to make the player in ground scroll to the left. Then I added collision to the ground and some variation to the ground tiles that respond. Now this was starting to feel like an actual game. Here's the code for respawning a new random ground tile once an existing tile goes off screen, and here's the code for ground collision. I won't go into it too much since it's really similar to the pipe spawning and collision that I talk about in my Flappy Bird video, but the entire source code and assets for the game are available on GitHub if you want to check it out or need it for your cringe compilation. I really wanted to add more obstacles and things to interact with, but it was already almost 2am with the deadline the next morning, and I didn't know if I'd be able to finish if I implemented anything else. So I decided to try and get a minimum viable product of the game first, and add new features if I still had the time. Spoiler alert, I did not. I started working on the sprite for the cursor, but nothing was really looking good, probably due to a mix of it being 2am and my lack of art skills. So I figured it was probably better to have no cursor sprite than an ugly one, and moved on. I made a score counter that tracks the distance you've traveled, which is really just a timer. At this point, I was familiar enough with SDL that with the documentation, writing a function for drawing text to a position was really straightforward. Then I made a proper game loop with a death screen that lets you reset the game. After that, I made a high score counter and then made some simple sound effects with SFXR. At this point, it was getting really close to the deadline, so I quickly put together a simple splash screen and title screen, built the game to the web within Scriptum, and finally submitted it 3 minutes before the deadline. Oh, what a relief. Wait. Wait, what the f- Yeah, I probably should have tested my web build. First of all, I forgot to build my game with a minimal HTML file instead of this one with the ugly watermark and tons of options that just break the game. And more importantly, if you have eyes, you can probably see that the entire UI is broken. I think this might be because mscripten uses an outdated port of SDLTTF, which is SDL's font rendering library, but I'm not really sure. So I guess that means that my game won't be rated highly, but to be fair, it's a pretty sh** game anyway. After the rating period, I'll definitely update the itch.io page with a working version, and I might also add some extra stuff that I didn't have time to create, and also implement any feedback I get. So far, a lot of people have found the game too hard, and the thought of that didn't even cross my mind during development. So either I'm an absolute god at video games, or my game has terrible controls and I was too used to them to notice. And I'm pretty bad at video games. Overall, I'd consider this a success. The point of this was to get more familiar with SDL, and I definitely did. I really loved programming in SDL, and I can't wait to use it in future projects, which hopefully won't have a lack of features and broken UI. If you want to try out Cursor Custodian, a link to its itch.io page is available in the description. And if you don't want to have to guess what your score is, there's a link on the page to a build with working UI. And like I said, it's open source, so I'll also leave a link to its GitHub repository in the description if you want to check it out. That's everything, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.